And uh, Todd, how you doing? I'm doing well. Is it Steve? It is. How are you? Doing well. Hey, it's nice to be able to talk to you in person. I've personally heard you on the radio many times. Never thought I'd have the chance to talk to you on the phone, but uh, here we are. Well, I told our uh, our folks that uh, we we were looking forward to this interview because I was just wondering if your son, uh, if they said anything about the program up in heaven when he was there. We, we just not that we're focused well, on he hasn't ourselves. Anything to me about it? Okay, all right. Well, you know, I just uh, I didn't read it in the book and nothing uh, like good job. Yeah. Or hey, I I want to congratulate you on on mm-hmm. the book and its success. Uh, I got it soon after it came out and have told more people about it and. Uh, I just think it's it's wonderful. You did a great job, and I'm well, glad you know, it's continuing. I, to be honest, you know, the success is just all God because there's no way uh, me uh, or I don't think anyone can find an audience that like Heaven Is for Real has found without yeah. God behind it. Right, mm-hmm. definitely. Mm-hmm. But yes. you know, people ask us all the time, "Well, what do you do?" Thinking about all the numbers, we don't. <laughs> we just go back to life That's every right. day, normal. I did garage doors yesterday, and I got interviews today, and we just don't think about the numbers. Yeah. We let God take care of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember when I was famous. It was the same way. <laughs> and, uh, but, um, Todd, <laughs> if, if, you, if you had another title for the book, I, I think it would just simply be the word hope. I mean, to me, that is what uh, this book is all about. It is solidifying uh, the hope of a lot of people. And it's offering hope for some people mm-hmm. that maybe didn't truly believe that heaven was for Those real. Those doubting mm-hmm. Thomases. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the other thing, I guess my word would be peace. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. good. He just talks about a peace that passes understanding. You know, I, I, his, his words that I love to begin my events with are in John 16. He tells his disciples, in this world you will have trouble. Yeah. Boy, isn't that mm-hmm. true? Mm-hmm. And I ask people, how many of you know this isn't heaven yet? <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> and we we got that one figured out. But you he says to the disciples, not. "I tell you this, so you can have my peace." Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in this world, the only way to cope with the hard times, the questions, the doubt, why do bad things happen to good people, is a peace that that is founded on the fact that Christ has overcome this world, yeah. and the outcome belongs to Him. And when we know that the outcome belongs to him, we can have peace. Mm -hmm. Okay, now when we come back in our limited time, I'm going to ask you to talk about two things. One is what happened for people that haven't read the book. And anybody that calls our program today, we're going to give you a copy of the book if you call the program. program. Um, And uh, so we'll give that away for you. But I, I, I want to ask you what happened. You tell what happened. And then secondly, I want you to tell people what your son said heaven was like mm-hmm. and uh, and we'll deal with that and then we'll let you go to the next interview but I think that would really be a blessing to a lot of people and hopefully motivate them to get the book or to get the book for their children heaven is for real for kids number one New York Times bestseller there it is uh, we'll be back with Todd Burpo after this At New Life, we are passionate about helping people experience recovery. And it's no exception when it comes to recovery from the addiction to drugs or alcohol. We are very grateful to have found what we believe is the premier facility to offer a Christian 12-step model of care. It treats the whole person and offers biblical values as the foundation for treating the mind, body, and spirit. Our partner in drug and alcohol addiction provides exemplary medical and psychiatric care, as well as Christian-based psychotherapy, pastoral counseling, biblical studies and meditation, educational groups, worship and prayer, and a Christian 12-step program. The approach is non-denominational and guides the patient to experience freedom through a renewed relationship with Jesus Christ. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE if you or someone you love is struggling with drug or alcohol addiction. That's 1-800-639-5433 or go to newlife.com. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now, back to the program. Hey, we're uh, talking with Todd Burpo, who, with his son, wrote the book Heaven is for Real. And Todd, at the break, I came up with a third question, but let me start with this. Tell everybody what happened. Well, uh, I'll try to keep a lot of things as brief as possible, but a little over about eight and a half years ago, 
Uh, my son uh, came down with appendicitis, but unfortunately, appendicitis symptoms and stomach flu are the same. Yeah. And there was a bug going around town. Matter of fact, my daughter was throwing up into the bathtub in the motel we were in the same time he was throwing up into the toilet. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so it looked like we had the bug, and that's what the doctors thought. But by the time they figured out what was really wrong with him, Cassie got better, Colton didn't. His appendix had probably been ruptured about five days, and his body was septic. And we just about watched our son die in front of us and suffer, and it was terrible to see him throw up every 30 minutes on the half hour. And it was just, uh, as parents, the most excruciating thing we went through. And in that period of time, we were mad, we were questioning. It's like, God, do you know where are you? And uh, it wasn't very quickly, but later on we found out that while we were screaming at God, Jesus was holding our son on his lap. Mm. And uh, then our son continues to tell us just incredible things that he experienced. Um, but he really verified the, his story by being able to tell us where we were, where mom and dad were, what we were doing while he was in surgery. Okay, now this was my well, this was my third question, and we'll just go with that. And that is, mm-hmm. how do you know it's true? And and there are several proofs here. One is he knew where you guys were while he was in the hospital, totally mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and not only that, what we were doing. You knew and what could, you were doing. And, and a kid can't make up stuff and get every detail right like he did. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then there were other proofs. Let's talk about that. How else well, he, did you know it was for sure? Well, um, he, he met my grandfather, and he talks about him very first person, tells me about my past with him. And he can even recognize a picture of my grandfather taken back in the 1940s that he'd never seen. Hmm. Now, there's no way drugs or some hmm. Sunday school teacher or right. even us implanted that memory. Right. I'm convinced he met my grandfather. Okay. Uh, he talks that that about, convinced me, too, mm-hmm. yeah, he, <laughs> when I read he it. He talks about my uh, uh, a daughter. We had a mes- miscarriage, and you right. never you can't talk about three-year-olds, about babies dying in their right. mommy's tummies. We never did. And he, he, he tells his mom, you had a baby die in your tummy, didn't you? We're like, how, wow. how did you know that? Well, he, she told me. And she talks about and discusses his, his bigger sister. He's very quick to correct people. Oh, you saw your little sister in heaven. He's like, no, I didn't. She was my big sister. He's got mm. the birth, birth order right. He knows that God's adopted her. Things the Bible teaches that we, he never learned in a Sunday school class, and he's spot on. Mm. And I think the other thing to me is a lot of people say, well, you're a pastor. You taught your son all this biblical stuff. I am not that good. <laughs> this, 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 <laughs> I mean... I don't know about your preschool program in your church, but my, my toddlers don't learn those types of specifics in a preschool Sunday school program, yeah. you know, and what the depth and the clarity and the details he has to share are so biblically on target, yeah. he had to have seen it. Well, they absolutely mm-hmm. are. Well, the other thing that impressed me, Todd, was that when he's looking at pictures of Jesus and he said, no, that's not him, and then this little, little girl who was an artist who had, uh, had the same experience drew a picture of Jesus, and he saw that picture and said, that's him. Yeah, that, that was pretty convincing. As well. mm-hmm. Okay, Todd. Yeah, now, wow. I want yeah. I want you. I'm, I I had one point of doubt, and I just okay. wanted you to explain it to me because I knew there'd be an explanation. Okay. Sure. When my point of doubt was when he was um, t- telling you about this stuff for the first time, and I think the book reads, "You had heard enough for one night," and and you didn't continue to ask him and 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 I'm thinking about well my 5 year old I would just be you know listening all night long and wouldn't want to stop but you wanted him to stop for a while tell me what was behind that I just am curious about that one element well there's two things one okay. I was not prepared to have a conversation like this with anybody mm-hmm. I believe in miracles in the bible and I believe that God in the bible still does those miracles right but I didn't really, it took me a while to realize mm-hmm. he did it for my son. My, my four-year-old son, too, was talking to me. Now, here's another thing. You have to understand Colton. He, he's, he's a typical boy. He's, he doesn't have many words. And you can't draw stuff out of him. You have to let him share. Yeah. And usually when he's done talking and he's ready to switch gears, I felt it was, for me to not corrupt his story, I needed to let him share it when he was ready to share. And right. some of the things he shared with me were so mind-boggling. Like, I remember that prayer I prayed, uh, you know, in the hospital when I was screaming at God. And when he told me, Dad, Jesus told me he was answering your prayer, that's why he sent me back. 
I had to get out of the room because of conviction. There you oh, go. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks for mm-hmm. for that. Mm-hmm. Now, just to clarify on what happened, uh, this happened, and it never came up until you guys made the same trip again. And he, until he was and you older? went by the hospital or the well, town. Well, he he talked about it. I mean, in the hospital, he told me, "Dad, you know, I almost died." Uh-huh. You have to understand, we were fighting for our son's life. Hmm. Yeah, we were so afraid. Now, if he had said, "Dad, you know, I saw Jesus. Hey, I just came back from heaven," I would have probably right. gone, "What?" Yeah. But he didn't say that <laughs> didn't there. Say mm-hmm. And, and um, later on, he said, "Yeah, Dad, Jesus told me I had to be nice." You know, he, he, he Jesus used Doctor Doctor Holleran's favorite part in the book, by the way, is when he said I had to pay him because Jesus used him to help fix him. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so, Doctor likes that when he's told me that's his that's favorite funny. passage that's in the funny. scripture. There, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, he was saying things all along, and we're like, where is that coming from? Yeah. But when we finally, but you have to understand, in 15 days, I had like five nights of sleep. Mm -hmm. Mom and I were so scraped on the inside and so hurt and so depleted. We didn't want to talk about the hospital. We needed to heal. And finally, it was was about four months before we could even kind of joke about that terrible thing we'd been through when he said... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, well, the angel sang to me while I was there, and I think the delay was our fault, not his. Yeah, okay. Well, wow. that really clears mm-hmm. that up. Makes now, sense. for our audience uh, who have not read the book, tell us what he said heaven was like. Well, there's so many things, but the part that I like the most is the closeness of God and the closeness of his family members. Uh, he'll tell you in heaven, Dad, you can just feel God's love all the time. You can just feel mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And he says heaven is just like you know your home. And I think so many times, wow. as Christians, we have to settle once and for all when we leave this place or we go, leaving home or going home. And Colton will tell you, Dad, you can just feel God's love. And when he describes God the Father especially, how big he is, but then how much he loves you. And he, he gets so, and he almost turns into a daydreaming phase. You know, you can just look at him as he's trying to explain it. It's like, and I want to go back, you know. That's what's, to me, just incredible about heaven. But then yeah. the family members, too. Uh, you know, he talks about, now you can't put every detail, not only in one, but even in two books. But he talks about this sister that he never knew that he had. When Jesus took him and the, an- the angels and Jesus took him to the gate and took him to heaven, she was there waiting for him. Mm. Yeah. And, 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 and spending time with Pop and his family members again. Those are his two greatest memories. Now, he'll tell you about all the colors, all the animals. People want to know if there's animals in heaven. And according to Colton and even Isaiah, you know, the answer is yes. Yes, that's right. Uh, and so, uh, but that's a big thing other people want to know. But Colton will tell you his favorite memories are about Jesus and, and Jesus teaching him and being with his family members. Well, let me tell you um, what I think is one amazing uh, proof of the validity and the authenticity here. And that is uh, Colton himself, now these years later. Um, I've watched him in interviews, and I've seen the way that he uh, responds and interacts. And he's an incredible boy. Well, he's just black and white. And like you say, some interviewers struggle with getting him to talk, too. He's kind of short short on words. But Mm. we're not coaching him at all. We're just letting him be him. Yeah, well, he's the real deal, and uh, heaven's the real deal, and uh, just grateful uh, that you've written the book, and um, grateful for Thomas Nelson publishing it, that they've certainly published uh, Dave and I and um, many Me. other great, uh, and uh, Dr. Hubbard here, so uh, we are grateful to them, and uh, anything we could pray for you for? Well, I think there's a lot of things that we need. The one thing that, that we really need prayer for is... You know, as we continue just to share about God, you know, I don't care about what people think of me, but I do care about what people think God think about God mm. because of me. Yeah. And, you know, and we need the, your prayer support, because we, I just got off a, an interview before this one with a, a newspaper from Israel. Oh, wow. And <laughs> the, yeah, how do you represent, and even the, the, the person interviewing me is, well, how do I represent people that don't even know if they believe in Jesus, your story, too? So right. we need wisdom. We need uh, uh, protection. We, we need a, you know, all that. And we value people praying for that because every opportunity we have, we, we, we hope God uh, gets all the glory. Amen. Mm-hmm. Well, um, thanks for joining us today. We really well, have. Thank you wow. for the invitation. <laughs> this has been a, a neat opportunity, and thank you so much. Okay, and um, I'll, I'll just remind everybody the title of the book, is Heaven is for Real, 
Uh, Todd Burpo and his son, Colton, have written this book together. 